What's going on? Welcome back to Financial Journey. So today we're going to talk to you about Lucid. I want to go over some of the current data points, break it down on what really moves the stock price today. And then aside from that, I just want you to briefly touch on the interview done by BBC. So I'm going to go over all the things that you need to know. But first, make sure to hit that thumbs up. And with that, let's get right to it. So starting off, it did go down 1.62%. After hours, it is continuing to go down slightly, 0.18%. 24.1 million shares were traded. 24.5 is the average. So even though the volume was relatively high, a lot of the volume being done was linked to algorithmic trading, not necessarily institutions getting in. And that's been more of a common occurrence over the last several weeks. So again, I just wanted to bring that up. Dark pool, a little bit quieter than normal, as you can kind of see right here. Dark pool is often enough linked to shorting as well as larger institutions. So I'll touch on what shorts did and everything else that you need to know. But today there has been no news, no SEC filings, nothing along those lines. Rather, just over the last several days and over this last weekend, just a lot of rumors, more specifically about Hyundai. So I did a video all about them, as well as on Monday, there was this interview that was done between BBC and Peter. And so in this interview, Peter kind of breaks his mold and more on the attack. So Lucid CEO says Tesla seems to be distracted, kind of losing its way. So in here, he kind of talks on several things on how because Elon seems to be very focused too much so on social media, politics and all the other crap, obviously due to X or Twitter or whatever the hell it's called, but he seems to be very distracted with that. And that obviously leaves the, I guess, technology advancement to Lucid rather than Tesla. And even he kind of talks on China for the most part and how even Tesla is far ahead of just the Chinese technology. So kind of interesting. He seems to be ruffling a lot of feathers based on this. And it's kind of interesting. I know some people caught on to this, but in the past, like Peter's never actually said Tesla's name in their earnings. He always says the next best competitor and whatever else. I believe last earnings was the first time he actually openly started to talk on Tesla and same goes for this. Or maybe his legal department said, hey, you know what? You are good to say Tesla whenever the hell you want. So maybe that's why he's doing it. But I really like this new form of Peter. It kind of shows that Lucid is the way. Lucid is going to be the next generational uh, change in the EV sector. But the only thing is, I wish like Lucid would have been a little bit better operationally. That way, he's not just running his mouth, right? Imagine, for instance, in 2024, we don't hit that 9,000 target. How stupid this is going to look and how stupid Peter is going to look. So I, I wish he would have had some backing just to say, hey, you know what, we're actually doing a good job rather than just technology wise. But you know what? It is what it is. In my opinion, by him saying all these bold statements, that also could mean that he's very optimistic about the foreseeable future. And clearly, I'm sure you can already tell, I kind of analyze things too much so. So either he could be very confident about the foreseeable future or either he just did a very bad mistake making fun of Tesla when like they produce more vehicles in like one week than Lucid does in a whole year. So kind of a weird statement, but you know what? It's hopefully Lucid does and continues to innovate in the foreseeable future. So let me know your thoughts on this interview and if there was anything that stood out to you. Aside from that though, let's go over what shorts did. They didn't really do all that much. So they increased around 68 or 69,000 shares. 27.42% of the free flow is being shorted. That works out to be 242.89 million shares overall are being shorted. Cost of our average 31.05 and then utilization is 96.36. I'm sure some of you might be wondering how how the hell did it go from around 30% to 27%? Well, two times per month, there is um, official reports done by the NASDAQ. So as you can kind of see, it was released on May the 24th. So Friday, I think it just a lot of systems didn't really update. At that stage, it showed the short interest to be around 28.05%. So then what Ortex and many other uh, platforms do, they take this information as of May the 15th and just calculate and estimate what today's short interest is. So this is why it did go from roughly around 31 to where we are now. So that's kind of what the basis is for that. But nonetheless, they didn't really do all that much today. So just a lot of swing trades back and forth. Options wise though, so today there was around 339,000 in calls, 277 in puts, 53% of all the options 
being done today though were optimistic and bullish and of the call options that were purchased there's a consensus for it to be above 350 for this week so clearly assuming that gdp and pce are going to be positive and insinuate that there's going to be rate cuts sooner rather than later causing a broader market rally so I definitely feel 350 might be out of the realm of possibilities, but you know what? I absolutely love the optimism on whoever is buying that. If anything, maybe there might be some uh, above 350 for at least June the 7th or June the 14th, but who knows? I could be wrong. Looking at puts though, you do see a consensus for it to be sub $3 or between 250 and $3. So in my opinion, the risk versus reward is favoring upside, finally at least. Looking on the actual chart itself, so with it closing at $2.74, it is trading between this pivot and this R1, so $2.58 is going to be that next strong support. Support. didn't even come uh, remotely close to that today so uh, of course that's kind of a good thing I believe the last time this pivot was tested was like diamond so for the rest of the week definitely something to watch for and then vice versa two dollars and 82 cents is going to be that next strong resistance slash target and it did actually get above that temporarily so it did have a high today of two dollars and 88 cents so going into the rest of the week definitely watch for this to be broken and hopefully trade between this r1 and this r2 but on the actual chart itself so it is still staying above that 50 day moving average my last video that i did at least technical analysis on was here it's on friday which uh, at the time it was below that 50 day moving average so that is very very positive that it is still trading above that 50 day moving average because usually in lucid's case it's always struggled with that. I'm sure you guys already are well aware of that. But right now it is trading just between this 50-day moving average and central boiling event. So hopefully with good pieces of news or maybe confirming the whole Hyundai partnership rumors that's been floating around that could really skyrocket Lucid and cause another squeeze kind of scenario as what happened here. So let me know your thoughts on that. Looking at Stochastic, you do see a bearish deviation. But despite that, though, you also do see it very oversold. So if there's a good piece of news, then you could see a very nice rush of value investors getting into Lucid as what we've seen in the past. Just the only unfortunate thing is Lucid likes to post a lot of things on social media and just have a lot of rumors floating around and never really confirm them. If they were to actually confirm even like remotely 1% of all the rumors out there, the stock price would be significantly higher than where we are now. But aside from that though, number of retail investors have been getting in and very much excited about that today. So even though institutions weren't really getting in, retail was kind of making up for that. So let me know your thoughts on Lucid in the comments below. Give yourself a shout out if you've been buying, if you've been selling as well. What is your thoughts on this new, I guess, version of Peter where he seems to be more on the attack rather than just silent so even though this is I, I like him talking definitely it's a very good thing it's kind of interesting his choice of words though so do you think that it was more so because he's confident about the future or he just has enough of tesla elon and all that stuff so don't forget to hit that thumbs up and subscribe but one final thing i just wanted to share with you take advantage of this promo simply sign up for a new account throw 100 dollars at it and they give you seven fractional shares of the mag 7 so pretty kick-ass deal link in the description below and also the comments with all that said appreciate all of you watching